It's so pretty, Mama. Oh, I love you it. have to be up close. Hi there, I'm Jane from Sustain My Craft Habit. I'm going to be showing you how to do something that I've had on my must-try list for ages, and that is to make a crystallized acrylic light-up nightlight for my daughter. In this project, you're going to learn how to design your very own personalized design using the XArt AI function in XTool Creative Space. This is so, so cool. Whatever theme or idea you have in mind, you can create your very own art to use for your crafting with your laser cutting machine. I made a really cute frog theme design because my littlest one is obsessed with frogs lately and it has her name on it. So we'll show you how to do that in Xtools Creative Space and then how to actually engrave and cut the clear acrylic using the Xtool P2. Let's get started. To create our design, we're simply going to open a new canvas in the Creative Space software and then click on the little AI button here on the left. This will bring up the search function in which place we're going to simply type in our prompt. So I'm putting in here cute frog with a crown and then simply press generate and see what the AI comes up with. This will take just a couple seconds to generate and then you'll receive a few different options to choose from. After a few seconds, I saw these two designs and you can scroll back and find all of your uh, AI art that you've created in the past. It works by a credit system. I think there's a generous number of credits to begin with and then you can earn more as you share your projects and things like that. But I really found this frog with the big eyes, super cute, I knew my daughter would love it. So I said, export this to the canvas. Now I'm not convinced that if you use the same prompts as me that you would get the same frog. That's really the fun part of using AI. It's uh, They end up being very unique and different, but I will leave this Creative Space file for you in case you'd like to use it for your particular project. So now that we have our design, we need to clean up our file for the project. I started by clicking the trace object button or trace image. Now the objective here is to create a rough tracing of our frog shape. And I'm going to adjust the fuzziness threshold and all the different functions really to try to get rid of some of the details around the outside of the design because I really am trying to kind of create in the next step an outline of the frog itself. Okay, after saving that, it places it as a new layer onto the canvas that you can see um, in behind the original image layer. So we're just going to move that original image a little bit out of the way so that we can see the tracing that we created. Now we can click on that tracing and you can see all the little pieces are grouped together. So select ungroup to isolate all the elements. Then you can go in and delete any of the extra pieces. So these two pieces were still grouped together um, and we can just click individually to clear away any yeah, of those extra parts. Okay, so now we have a pretty good creation or um, tracing of the frog itself and we're going to use the outline tool to create a bit of an offset layer. So this is now where you can tweak how wide of a border you want around your design. I've upped mine to about 12 millimeters and then pressed OK. And so you can see here it generates another layer, which we're going to separate from the tracing. Now it's looking really good. We just want to clean up those little details in the center. And the easiest way is to take another object. I'm going to use a rectangle in this case and put it right over there and then you'll weld those two pieces together. So you'll simply select them and press the combine button here on the right side object panel. Okay, so now we have a simple solid shape. That's the exact outline of our little frog. We are done with our image tracing and can go ahead and delete that. And now we're going to use the outline we created, which should fit perfectly over our image, to mask out and cut out the outside of the design. The trick here is to make sure that the outline is the top layer in your design. And you can 
click on the layers and then slide that up and now you can place that over just so you can see how it fits on there perfectly and now when you click on the outline as well as the image you can use the create mask function to create this mask around your design and there we go that's how we used that outline to create this outer shape for our little frog those two layers have now been merged into one image so we do actually want to create one more outline layer which will be the cut line versus the engrave line which the image will be so I just simply click that outline button again and then a small offset for that and set this function to cut for that particular layer for the next step we're going to set the image layer to engrave and then pick a filter there are seven different styles to choose from and so I just kind of clicked through them to see how I would like the design the best and I found this comic 2 was preferable because I liked how the eyes stayed dark so just kind of click through them and see which version you would like to use for your engraving now that our image is all set we're almost done we're going to add two rectangles to this design so the first rectangle will be about the width of my frog and this is where I'm going to do some personalization I'm going to add my daughter's name on there and then the second rectangle needs to be the one that will insert into the base piece so you want to make sure that that bottom rectangle is sized to the width of your base that you purchase so in this case I put 2.75 inches but you'll see in a later step I had to adapt that because the base that I used was actually 3.15 inches after positioning them all in place I simply use that vertical align function to make sure that they were all lined up and now you want to select your offset piece and both rectangles and combine them to create one cut line just double check to ensure that this remains as a cut function for that particular layer the final step here is to add a name so I simply used the text that's built in here and searched for a font that I liked I wanted mine to say princess Nikki is my daughter's name so I used two different fonts and uh, place that in there you can choose whether to use either the engrave function or the score I selected engrave but I think the score one would look better because of how the light passes through the nightlight it just makes it look a little bit cleaner and more interesting but this is totally a personal preference thing the next step is to set the material type that we're using so we're using a transparent acrylic if you don't find it in the settings you can always search for different options so I had set six millimeter transparent acrylic for this but it's actually just the three millimeter acrylic so this is when I went back to double check my settings for my base and realized that that little tab on the bottom was too narrow so I went back and created another rectangle with the right size of 3.15 inches and then I placed that underneath and combined it with that original layer but again anytime you make a change like this be sure to double check your processing type that it doesn't switch to something else okay our design is ready to cut in our Xtool P2 I purchased this one millimeter thick plexiglass it's a clear acrylic that has this double-sided coating on their protective coating it's like a shrink wrap you want to peel that off before cutting because it is really stinky <laughs> when you try to cut through this so sometimes though it's hard to get a good measurement because I like to use the custom measure function so you can put the piece down do the auto measure and then after the auto measure is done remove the protective sheet um, just to make sure you're all ready to cut well, I was using the thinner acrylic for this demonstration I would highly recommend a three millimeter thick acrylic because it will make it stronger and look more professional especially if this is something you're thinking of making for selling this whole piece took about 
25 minutes to engrave and cut using the X-Tool P2. The engraving part by far took the longest, so if you simplify the design, it could go even faster, but I thought that was completely acceptable for a beautiful, personalized craft such as this one. The bottom part here on my base is because I used um, a test piece of acrylic, but the design itself won't have that when you make it yourself. To assemble the nightlight, you simply slide your acrylic inside the base. There's no other assembly required. You like it? I see them green. see them green? Yeah. It's so pretty, Mama. Oh, I love you it. You have to be up close. Thank you so much for watching. I truly hope you learned something today and found some inspiration with this project. You can see that the sky is truly the limit. Like I have a niece who loves basketball, another who loves gymnastics. So I think for the holidays, I'll be making them all their own personalized nightlights. These are products that you can easily make and sell, um, even just different unique themes or uh, community types of events. You can make your very own nightlights for them. Uh, pretty inexpensively. Please let me know if you have any questions. If you love this type of content, we do a lot of also upcycling DIY and Cricut projects at Sustain My Craft Habit. My sister Sonia, she sews, so I feel like we have a little bit of something for everybody. Have a great day.